Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna take a quick look at converting this just Ryobi battery that we all have for a lot of tools, at least most of us, making it to some sort of emergency charger. These are nominal 18 volts, but if I measure it right now, it would be 20 volts. That is not exactly usable with most inverters, or if you want to plug in, for example, a router directly. So we're gonna fix that with a buck boost converter module these are adjustable what it means you input here let's say the 20 volts on the output here now you can either increase that higher or you can lower it in this case we will lower it to 12 12 and a half volts at least 12 and a half to 12.8 volts in order to make it work for our purpose here we will be using one of these ryobi convert uh, chargers they're quite the cheapest one they sell. That's why I'm gonna sacrifice this one. You'll see in a minute, it will all make sense. And yes, I use a lot of these buck converters. I just find out, found out that this version somehow worked for me. Some information regarding it would be that they are the input. Oh, obviously, these are both DC to DC. So input is DC, output is DC. Absolutely no AC inside them. But we'll see later where we gonna convert it to ac with something else and the input voltage is 5 to 30 volts so we are within range with this one the output voltage is 1.25 up to 30 volts continuous and uh, the input they suggest around 8 amps but 8 amps peak 10 amps supposedly i would say for long-term operation, do not exceed 5 to 6 amps. That's why I chose a Ryobi 4 amp battery. And next thing for output, I do not suggest you put anything that draws more than 5 amps as well. So keep in mind 5 amps for these devices. And it's easy in all devices. You can check on the back of them. They write down what the uh, amperage draws. And this one is 1 amp, so we are well within the limits of this one or allowance of this and what we're gonna do next i'm just gonna show you how to build it and now this one will be found any of these they're all the same you can find them on my uh, link on description yes it, uh, it's an affiliate link if you want to do this build i'll leave links to most of the things that are probably available on uh, amazon and somewhere else if i cannot find them in amazon if you purchase through those links you don't pay anything extra but support this channel and with that on the way let's start building first thing to do here we make sure the battery is operational and by that we have this charging indicator which is good the second one we know this works because i already tested it we're gonna put it on the side and third, I know this one works. I already tested to charge the battery. Let me just retest it again. These two at least must work good. Okay, the charger is plugged in right now. I'm not sure if the camera is showing. There's a red LED right there. Let me plug the battery real quick. Okay, and as you see, the red LED means it's uh, checking for the battery. And after it checks, this battery is full, so it's not going to do anything. It just threw right away on green. That means the battery is working and it's full of charge let's unplug it real quick and now what we are gonna do let me just discharge this capacitor real quick boom as you see the light went out because there's capacitors inside and you don't want to open it with bare hands without discharging them let's open this one up and do the mods that we are gonna do here it's gonna be very easy i'm just gonna run two wires inside and nothing really fancy inside there is almost nothing really it's kind of bare bones because this is only the control for the batteries for the charging level and most of the power is here on the charging brick so that's why i even chose this one it's a little bit easier to work with and cheaper easy peasy to do now what we need here is to solder one wire and then minus and one wire on the plus and we should be ready to go after that we will probably punch a hole somewhere here to make sure the wire can run outside now the wire i'm going to choose for this one will be just a low gauge wire just you can find them at the 
on Amazon. I'll probably leave a link to these ones too. A link on Amazon too for the wire strippers. I've had these for a long time and I'm absolutely happy with them. Do what brand are they? I have no idea. They don't say. So it just says, warning, wear safety goggles. That's the company. That's the brand. At least they're trying to be safe. So that's all I care. Okay, let's strip these real quick. Okay, so now we soldered these two wires. And as you see, here's my minus on this side, on the tip of the leg. As you see, the leg here, which is minus labeled here, goes right here. And the plus will be right here, tip of this other leg. That is labeled here, plus as well. Is when you put the battery in, it corresponds with those labels. And I am good to go. In that case, we're just gonna put the wires to go a little bit behind here. So we pull them all in one side out. And I'm just gonna make a hole somewhere here to take them out and that's all. So now inside this, we are pretty much done. We can put the cover back in. We have our two wires coming out and that's all we really need here. Let's uh, just uh, put the cover back up and we should be pretty good to go. Let me put this one back where it was. Just like that, and it should technically go back in place, just like this. Okay, okay, so, so far, I think this is done, this part here, and now one thing we have to do is test it, if it actually worked. And as you see, we have 20.7 on this output right here. So now we are good to go so far, and we are gonna connect it to our buck converter right here and we'll take it from there what could go wrong okay take the battery out so we don't risk to short it and the beauty of it the reason i'm putting the leads directly inside is that just in case i ever use it with some solar or something else there's diodes in here that do prevent me from sending energy back in so i cannot send energy back in if i wanted to but I can plug the battery, unplug anything else, plug the battery, plug this to the wall, and have it charging. But first, let's connect our buck converter really quick. This is our input. There's one plus and minus right there. Okay, just before I connect anything else here on the out, let me see if the green light turns on if I plug in the battery. And yes, the green light came on. I hope the camera can catch it. Let's make sure we are set up at 12 volts here. If we need to go higher or lower, really quick. That is this one matters the most here. Let me plug this one in. Okay, and the positive in here. We have the meter set to 200 just in case. And this voltage you see here is the capacitors. Let's plug in the battery. And we are at 12.5. And just to demonstrate to you guys, let me just play with this little screw right here. As you see, I'm dropping it or increasing it. As you see, I'm gonna probably leave it 12.7 just to make sure we're good. And we are good with the voltage. Okay, so from over 20, we are at 12.7. And yes, these are the capacitors, as I said, holding it. Let me take this out, turn this off. And let me just plug this one real quick in case you didn't know how to tell the pulse on these barrel connectors like this. One of the wires is always either with a line like this throughout it, which is the positive, or it has a kind of disconnected line like this one right here. As you see, the one with the white line, that's our positive. And 99% of the time, positive is the part of the barrel that's inside, and negative is the part outside. Just so we understand some small but basic and very necessary principles about how these devices work because sometimes we all make mistakes yes i've been doing this for years and i still make mistakes i still learn and that's how we grow let me put it on this side here close it up now ideally but i'm not gonna make this permanent for myself ideally i would integrate a switch on this one and how you do that is very easy open a hole grab either a push switch like this one or one of those other switches open a hole here on the side cut out the positive 
connect in one side and then to the other side so you can just turn it off right here i'm not gonna do it because i'm not doing it permanent but you can if you want to and now let's plug in the battery because we are actually ready to go and let me make sure this one is not connected to the wall or anything like that okay it is right here and we are just running on battery and the battery is full let me plug it in yep as you see here it's turning on and if i had internet on it it would go through the process of doing its whole thing to turn on the whole device but i'm not interested to let it finish that process by the way i'll try to leave a link for the uh, this net gear and all this stuff that i'm using here as much as i can on the uh, description below anyway let me put this on the side and let me try something crazy that i said on the beginning of the video this is from lion energy they did not send this one but and this video is not sponsored by them i just personally like what they do lion energy they have all these uh really beautiful uh battery backups solar panels and yes i have solar panels from them i have inverters from them i have solar chargers from them and all that kind of good stuff and in my opinion they are one of the most underrated solar products company they don't really advertise too much they are based here in us and i personally would uh, would say they have really good products without getting paid or them even knowing that i exist and uh, let me just put this back in here too i am connecting this now to a in to an inverter this is a power inverter and i'm gonna turn the power inverter on in a second but let me plug in the battery real quick just to make sure this one has a fuse this one has two fuses and this one has a fuse inside so whatever i do here it will not break anything maximum i have to replace the fuse so i can do this but if you don't know what you're doing please refrain from doing crazy stuff now let's turn it on and as you see the green light is on this is actually beautiful now let me plug in something really quick to demonstrate that it works but before we do that we know we cannot exceed five amps on this one or 5000 milliamps to be just within the norms yes for a brief minute or two or a few minutes you can go to 10 amps or 8 amps i suggest you stay within that five six amps and that's it the rule of thumb now let me grab something real quick to plug in this inverter and see if we made a backup battery okay and now we will plug it real quick let me open it halfway so because it has a light charging indicator right here so you guys can see it it's right there that tiny pinhole so when i plug it in if it charges that should turn on so let me turn this on let me plug this charger in okay and let me plug it to the laptop and let me turn it towards the camera i hope you can see that there is a light right there that means it is charging and our uh inverter here is just a normal as you see right here it's not throwing up a fault or anything and this works really good for example if you need power what we call power on a pinch because of course you cannot do to power the house you're not gonna put a bridge or anything big or anything major but as for these devices charging a laptop put plugging in your router this kind of stuff you can do that and yes you can go up to a five or six, six amp ryobi battery the one plus the 18 volt ones or at least they say 18 volts but usually it's 20 as you saw you can go up to that six amps do not go over that i know they sell a 12 amp but if you want to go to the 12 amp or 9 amp and all that you need to upgrade the buck converter to something bigger than this and this is how you can make a quick backup battery that pulls out the 110 120 volts ac with a small inverter as you see this is only 400 watts but of course we cannot do that with this battery and in my opinion this is really beautiful i would say this is worth it you can give it a shot but please be careful when you work on these electronics all this stuff can go wrong really fast and you don't want to test with that before you charge this back in because this charger this can still charge this battery i would suggest you disconnect anything connected here 
on this side for example this one is disconnected and let me plug it in on charge really quick so you guys can see it and as you see right now it's starting to read the battery i'm not sure if you guys can see it right there it is charging now it's not gonna kill anything let's say for example let me try to turn this one on as you see it will work there's nothing wrong with that because this one will the this charger will not bring more than around 25 maybe even 30 volts maximum which is within range for this buck converter but you don't want to leave this plugged in while you're doing this because you will damage the battery that's not good so anytime you plug the battery in turn off any device or disconnect any device you have this connected to wait for the battery to be full then just simply unplug it from the wall and put it on the side somewhere now you have a 120 volts backup battery with just your regular ryobi batteries yes this is only for emergencies this is not something that you would replace any big battery bank or anything and links for everything that you see here as much as i can i will try to leave on description most of the links are gonna be as i said affiliate so thank you if you buy through them it helps me tremendously more than you can think without actually paying anything extra for you and i will try to find links that have actual better deals the best deals i can find and with that said i hope you learned something from this video and i'm hoping to see you like and subscribe this video we will see you next time. Bye!